Well, now NBC News is learning that employees, some of them, say supervisors threatened to fire them if they left their shifts early because of the tornado warnings. Now, the company, we should note, is totally denying those allegations. They say it is absolutely untrue that the employees would not be able to leave. All right, so I wanted to get into this fascinating story of uh, Mayfield, Kentucky, candle factory workers being threatened with job loss if they vacated their premises despite the tornado warnings that were emerging. And thus, we see the outcomes in the visual sense in terms of how the candle factory looked before the tornado as opposed to how it looks after the tornado. Now, this has been a long standing, but it's been brought up to the forefront much more, especially within the recent time frame. And the long standing issue is the complicated and dynamic relationship between workers vis a vis bosses. Now, workers vis a vis bosses has been a relationship that's been power leveraged heavily towards bosses as opposed to workers. Precisely so because of de-unionization, wage stagnation becoming more and more the norm throughout the 80s and then getting into globalization throughout the 1990s and even getting into issues pertaining to deregulating the economy, cutting back on issues pertaining to the EPA, cutting back on issues pertaining to providing tax cuts for the upper upper tax bracket in hopes of trickle down effects all these specific outcomes have disproportionately and if not exclusively tilted towards helping and or creating an environment where the power leverage extremely extremely if not in a lot of cases tilts towards the bosses and thus, that's the dynamic in relationship and the complexity within that relationship we saw play out as it pertains to Mayfield, Kentucky, and specifically this candle factory. But it's been playing out as of r late much more, much more in terms of John Deere workers, in terms of Kellogg's workers, in terms of these various workers going on strike in terms of arguing for better wages and better benefits we've also had flight attendants as well taking up a similar position therefore these issues in terms of dealing with this relationship that's found between workers vis-a-vis -vis bosses especially as it pertains to the power leverage tremendously shifting towards towards the bosses can be dealt with with issues pertaining to creating environments rooted along the lines of sustainable and or living wage let alone bargaining power in terms of unionization these aspects and or components that are often being articulated by workers is not even an overarching and overwhelming ask in many places in terms of the john deere situation that we had in terms of what we have in terms of kellogg's workers in terms of what we have when it comes to flight attendant workers all of these issues can be rectified by merely providing workers with certain certain power leverage most workers that are striking are not necessarily arguing for a, a workers co-op like existence they're merely just arguing for decent if not livable wages and bargaining power in terms of arguing for issues pertaining to a more robust health care system and or health care access these are the bare minimum asks in most cases and we find that power leverage dynamic and complex relationship play out as it pertains to what occurred when it came to mayfield kentucky and this specific candle factory in terms of bosses vis-a-vis -vis workers imposing the power leverage that if you leave you are going to lose your job despite the tornado warnings that's some of the analysis that's articulated here on msnbc i understand you're you pop back to your hotel room you're going to get back out in the field later on tonight <laughs> tell me a little bit about about how employees walked you through what happened on friday as the storm was coming in what did they tell you how did they try to stay safe 
sure. So I just broke a national exclusive um, less than an hour ago. Uh, this story stems out of me going up to one of the shelters that was housing a lot of the people who have lost all their worldly possessions, who didn't have any power and electricity. You no, know, the city doesn't have any power and electricity. And I talked to a guy there. While I was interviewing him, he told me that he was an employee of the of the candy factory and that while he was there, you know, before the tornado came, a lot of people there had wished that they would have been able to leave and go home to take shelter there with their loved ones or somewhere else that was safe, but they weren't allowed to because if they did, they risked losing their jobs. So I followed up and I've spoken to five people who all give me the same story.